no the topic of my presentation is uh, craniosynostosis and the term is interchangeable with the craniostenosis also the craniosynostosis is not so much dangerous except that there is a aesthetic problem and the cosmetic problem but the craniostenosis is a grave problem if uh, every resident should know about that how to diagnose the uh, physically and radiologically then the uh, the patients with the craniosynostosis can be prevented from uh, fatal complications this is my university <clears throat> the process of premature closing of a suture causing problems with the normal brain and skull development <clears throat> definitely in the postnatal life the skull is having the sutures and there is a membranous layer that's why it is not closed until and unless the brain develops so it is totally dependent on the development of the brain if the brain will develop the sutures will give the site uh, or uh, room to access up to a age where they have been closed craniosynostosis can be associated with the impaired central nervous system function due to the raised icp hydrocephalus and brain anomalies incidence is very low 3.3 to uh, 3.5 births 10000 births male has the sagittal and metopic synostosis as common while the female has having the coronal sutures common this is a <clears throat> picture of the membranous layer in the all the cranial sutures and this is the closed when the suture is closed at their time respective times in the time of the, the that if we see the time of the closure of the suture for the metopic it is the ninth month to two years anterior fontanelle closes between the ages of the 18 to 12, 24 months posterior fontanelle three to six months mastoid fontanelle one year and sphenoid fontanelle two to three months but the most important are the anterior uh, coronal and posterior coronal and the sagittal <clears throat> etiology exactly is not known and sporadic uh, cases most commonly occurs risk factors are the advanced maternal age maternal smoking male sex and fertility treatment we can classify on the basis of the genetic uh, uh, rules there is a uh, uh, when there is a isolated craniosynostosis exact cause is unknown but that can be classified uh, on the basis of uterine constraints and the fgfr3 mutation syndromics always there is a fgfr1 uh, growth factor which is present in the pfeiffer syndrome apert syndrome and kruzan syndrome primary versus secondary the primary stenosis means there is a inside brain with the inside brain is weak so it is had no capacity to develop that's why the close suture becomes close so primary defect of uh, there would be a defect of ossification head would be asymmetric uh, asymmetric brain continue to grow in areas where the sutures are open and most individuals have the normal neurological functions surgical uh, surgically there is a good prognosis examples are the coronal sagittal and other compound syndromic situations secondary are due to the brain malformations like the atrophy head will be symmetric growth of the brain impaired neurologically the patient would be abnormal low uh, iq uh, delayed milestones and no benefit from the surgery for example microcephaly and rest of the other conditions there are the other causes of the craniosynostosis in which the metabolic disorders hematological lysosomal storage diseases teratogenic genes especially the fanny twine valproic acid and rest of the other drugs can also lead to the one of this the condition male formations like the microcephaly encephalocele and shunted hydrocephalus and positional which is also common in cases where there there is a long period of the uh, illness in the childhood age group fetal head restraints and deformational and plagiocephaly <clears throat> so these are the few examples of the uh, syndromic uh, craniosynostosis in which apert krausen and there are the other things that are most commonly the aperts and the krausen are common apert is associated with the syndactyly and the flat midface and krausen is, uh, is associated with the orbital hypertelorism and flat face and the facial anomalies 
the suture uh, skull begins developing between the 23rd and 26th uh, days of the gestation ossification be begin begins forming the cranial wall bones at the two months margins of these bones host the osteoprogenitors with deposition of by the osteoblasts and remodeling by the osteoclasts to form sutures these are few figure uh, uh, these are few uh, uh, pictures which you, uh, you can see the uh, central sagittal suture is totally obstructed uh, obliterated so there is a suture which is involved is the sagittal scaphocephaly the is uh, the uh, cranium is like the boat shape anterior plagiocephaly when you see the right sided anterior coronal suture is obliterated so on the opposite side there is a development of the uh, cranium and also the brain can shift to other side and for the trigonocephaly uh, you can see the metopic suture is closed that's why it is in the keel shaped structure diagnosis made on only the uh, particularly on the physical examination and radiological findings uh, we should see the scalp not only the scalp but we should palpate that also the sutures face should be examined properly eyes should be examined and particularly if the child is little bit uh, uh, adult uh, means at the age of the 2 or 3 years we can also see the fundoscopy to find out any kind of the raised icp signs limbs should be checked and mouths because this is also a, the for the management of the cranial synostosis and such type of the uh, problems we should know about the other associated anomalies like the uh, cleft palate <coughs> the pathophysiology <coughs> behind the syndromic and those cranial uh, synostosis where there is a more than one suture is involved are the increased intracranial pressure hydrocephalus which is very uncommon it can be present and uh, develop after the surgery for the cranial synostosis visual disturbances are utmost important and uh, definitely a neurosurgeon and the multidisciplinary team should uh, check the uh, uh, visual disturbances so that we can attack and uh, diagnose and uh, uh, treat the patient earlier and uh, this type of the morbidity is uh, uh, is a very bad for the person who has no any vision then no need for the surgery because most of the time when the pa uh, patients come children they they are not in a condition children so so they can define okay, how uh, what what is having their problem only the headache so we should see the visual disturbances so that we can do the surgery and also the mental retardation <coughs> So these are the few uh, pictures uh, of the types in which you can see the uh, sag sagittal, sagittal uh, uh, scaphocephaly or dolichocephaly, boat shaped skull, and uh, for the canines, uh, metopic, there's a trigonocephaly you can see, and lambdoid pilocephaly. Lambdoid and the uh, entry coronal can be uh, affected, and uh, so it uh, used as a entry and a plagia, entry and posterior. Pelagiocephaly. <clears throat> These are few pictures of the patients. This is a boat shaped skull of the child having the scaphocephaly. This child is having on the right side is having the uh, anterior pelagiocephaly. On the left side, it is a, a small encephalocele and with the keel shaped head, uh, uh, metopic uh, suture involvement, and also the cranial sinus process. This is the anterior pelagiocephaly on the uh, one side you can see the child's head is uh, move, uh, developing towards the right side though the left side is depressed is because of the anterior corner suture which is uh, obliterated or suture closed. Cranosinostosis, this is the active topic either it is a cranosinostosis uh, or the cranosinostosis. Uh, Every child should be seen for the signs of the raised ICP and the neurological problems. Coronal plagiocephalies, either anterior or the posterior plagiocephalies. And this posterior plagiocephaly, you can see on the left side, the, uh, the head from the occipital area is growing, while the right sided it is uh, not growing. So, diagnosis on the naked eye examination, x rays, CT scan, and isotope scans for the feature. But again, the naked eye examination and x ray, skull, and the CT is sufficient to diagnose such type of the problems. 
<clears throat> this X-ray is the case of the kinesthesis. This is a typical copper bentin appearance if the patient comes with a headache. Child never present, and sometimes we can uh, see physically that the patient is having the uh, fused uh, sutures. So the X-ray is helpful, and when when we find the child is having the copper bentin appearance, that means it is uh, because of the rays ICP. The CT scan gives you the clue about the indentations of the inner table of the cranium. You can also appreciate here that this indentation shows that this is the type of the craniostenosis. And this is the 3D reconstruction used mainly by the maxillofacial surgeons. <clears throat> so the tre treatment is the early surgery, strip craniectomy. The goal of the surgery is to do open the cranium. So you have to do the stiff craniectomies and total cranial vault reshaping is the advanced procedure. I think the most of the neurosurgeons are not practicing this type of surgery and they can take the help of the uh, maxillofacial surgeon and that should be because they are more expert than us in cases of uh, going advancement to the orbit and also the more uh, uh, basal uh, regions. So. Uh, there are two types of the procedure. Number first is the strip craniectomy, and second is the total cranial reshape, uh, vault reshaping or remodeling. The ventricular peritoneal shunt is uh, reserved for those cases who either, which is very rare, before the surgery or mostly after the surgery, they develop the hydrocephalus. In that very case, we can do the VP shunt. And the purpose is to correct the deformity to prevent the raised ICP and for the complication like the visual loss. Late surgery is particularly for the cos cosmetic purposes and when there is a isolated suture involvement. Timing of the surgery, early surgical treatment, early operation between the three, on three to six months age, better compliance of the brain, dura and scalp, primary objective in non-syndromatic craniosinostosis is to is to release the involved fuse suture and reconstruct reconstruction of all dysmorphic skeletal component. Calvarium is much more malleable, easier to shape and provide a better outcome. Rapid brain growth reshapes the bone. Indications for the surgery are the correction of the cosmetic abnormality, early treatment for uh, of the intracranial hypertension, optimizing the brain growth and when they were, whenever there is a severe proptosis. Basic mechanisms are the generous removal of the bone by the strip craniectomies, strip craniectomy and morcellation, active reshapement, frontoorbital advancement procedures, and cranial vault reshape procedures. Sagittal is to synostosis. Goal is to shorten the skull in sagittal plane and widen in the coronal plane. Posterior vault reshaping. Of if the occipital region is affected more, most often anterior and posterior skull need reshaping in a single or a separate stage procedure. Single stage for younger patients, coronal synostosis, orbital advancement procedures, supraorbital bar osteotomy, osteo osteotomy, standard treatment is bilateral or unilateral orbital advancement and bone reshaping. Lambdoid suture, posterior vault reshaping, metopic bifrontal craniotomy and osteotomy with the bifrontal orbital advancements. Position depends on the surgeon to surgeon. If surgeon is comfortable and he think he should go, go for the surgery by the in the supine position, it is again depend on the surgeon. Most of the time, many surgeons can use the prone position. <clears throat> These are a few uh, pictures or even the movies. This movie is not going to be able to help. Okay. Uh,
so uh, so these are the uh, uh, perioperative uh, pictures of uh, uh, patients uh, with the is uh, when the degal of the skull by a bicoronal normally commonly a bicoronal incision should be given and the whole, whole of the skull should be moved uh, anteriorly and as much posteriorly as you can second uh, do the stripped craniectomies and this whole of the brain is open and there is no any advanced procedure up to the orbits and the temporal region but only the cranium has been uh, the, the, the cranium has been open and this is the post operative picture and the uh, scalp is closed after surgery and uh, uh, this is a post op picture of this child and uh, when i show sh showed you first slide these both the brother and sister these are the siblings from the one city and they uh, first of all this uh, 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 boy came with the raised icp sign there is a visual disturbances the only problem is that when you are doing the strip craniectomy when you are closing the skin there is again a problem of the rejoining of the sutures so it should be a generous type of the strip uh, strip craniectomy so that after the closure of the skin they should not meet together and there is again non any not any fusion in the uh, uh, skull bones so these both uh, kids have been operated uh, uh, and uh, now they have uh, the whatever the vision has been lost they the vision uh, preserved and no any further deterioration of the vision and uh, also the siblings the girl is okay now so these are the few procedures uh, for the uh, entry advancements procedures you can see and uh, this is a barrel stave osteotomy the thing is that there are many names and the many neurosurgeons are doing with the different names but the Uh, idea is to do the advanced craniofacial problems uh, craniofacial procedures this is a pi procedure mccombs approach for the management of sagittal synostosis is the occipital reduction biparietal widening occipital protuberance is reduced biparietal diameter widened height of the cortex is lowered this is the mccombs procedure endoscopic sutureectomy nowadays many in many centers particularly in the western world it is uh, gaining the uh, uh, but i think it's still in the pakistan uh, is any anyone who is doing the uh, endoscopic cranial uh, this surgery for the cranial synostosis no one ji karte hain okay and there are the distraction devices based on the distraction osteogenesis and uh, you can see uh, between the after the strip craniectomies there are many glues and a few uh, uh, gadgets and uh, um, these are distraction uh, areas which distract and uh, try, uh, restrict to move the bone uh, towards and uh, restrict the osteogenesis further conservative therapy for the deformational plagiocephaly repositioning uh, repositioning uh, positioning if no improvement by 6 months and uh, there is a need of the helmet molding long term follow up is a speech genetic counseling feeding swelling problems and ophthalmological uh, follow up the early surgery Uh, is most important in cases of the raised icp whenever we pick the cases with the raised icp sign the visual disturbances and we see that there the the uh, uh, the, uh, the problem of the uh, cranio stenosis is active then uh, the early surgery is the main stay of the uh, treatment expert surgical techniques and the per and post operative care is most important <clears throat> we have seen that the bleeding and the temperature regulation is most important in these children if we are dealing with the at least the 6 months or under 1 year the bleeding is the main problem you have to uh, keep an a vigilant eye on the blood loss and also the temperature regulation patient or children should not go into the uh, uh, hypothermia so this can prevent if you are monitoring these two things the morbidity or mortality is low thank you so much